Hallelujah. Precious viewers, welcome to this mighty program again in which I'm featuring today the glory of Jehovah, the mighty glory of the Lord that descended into the revival meeting on that December 31st, the year 2012 at the city of Kisumu in Kenya. And I said in the previous program that that glory is too big for one church, is too big for one nation. And I said that because that glory came into the Christian meeting, the big, mega, grand, mega revival crusade, that glory essentially came into the body of Christ, the house of the Lord. And in the previous segment, the pre previous program, I looked at the obedience that that glory brought to Israel. And I said that this glory of God himself becomes the icon, becomes the monument becomes the trumpet, the announcement of obedience, dispensation of obedience into the church. But today, I would like to advance this further, precious people, so we can look at what other message is there. What other message is the Lord giving the church? What other instruction is there coming from his glory in the house. In the Bible, in the book of Exodus chapter 2, he describes the birth of Moses. He describes how Moses was born during distressful time where every male child was being killed and the mother pushed him put him in a basket when she could not hide him any longer and pushed him into the river Nile. And we saw very clearly the miraculous rescue, how the Lord rescued Moses, which was essentially the foretelling, which was the prophecy the Lord was speaking, saying, look, Moses, the way I have miraculously rescued you from being killed is the same way I am going to use you to miraculously rescue Israel from slavery. And so, moving on, we now see in chapter 3 of Exodus where God calls Moses. And I would like to read only two verses Exodus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Verse 5, he says, do not come any closer. God said, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And down there I said, Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of of Jacob. Precious people, we see here very, very clearly, we see a tremendous situation here, encounter, where Moses, finally, as he was shepherding the sheep of Jethro, Jethro was his father-in-law. 
And you know that when your father-in-law gives you anything to do, assigns you any task, you'd have to do it perfectly because that is your father-in-law. And many times when your father-in-law gives you a task, an assignment to accomplish, it is as though your father-in-law is testing you, trying you, investigating you, probing you, finding out, is this man worthy enough to keep my daughter? Is he worthy enough to marry my daughter? Is he a keeper? And so you see that when the Lord led Jethro to give Moses his sheep to keep, you can imagine the diligence, the due diligence with which Moses shepherded the sheep. However, Moses runs, one day runs into this burning bush. And the bush is burning. The flame is on the bush. But the bush is not burning up. So Moses was so shocked. And the Bible says, when the Lord saw that he had gone there, which means he left the sheep, and he went there to look, then he called out, Moses, Moses. I think that is a very tremendous message. That inside that flame, we now see that it was Jehovah himself. The same God that came in the cloud is the same God that was now in this burning flame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we now see one of the most important messages that comes out of there is that whenever the glory of God comes, nobody, and I repeat, nobody can ever afford to ignore. Moses could not ignore the glory of God. Moses had to leave the sheep, and when he saw that Moses had gone there to look, he called him, Moses, Moses. And that calling of Moses, Moses became the classical calling of the prophet of God. That became the standard way in which God calls his prophets. I remember when I was in Israel, when I was studying on Mount Carmel and living there, for many years, five years, when the Lord appeared in the cloud of his glory in that vision and called me, I remember when the voice called my name twice. That's why I am saying this became the classical calling of the prophet, the classical calling of the servant, Moses, Moses. But the take home message is this. That whenever the glory of the Lord Jehovah, God the Father, comes down, nobody can afford to ignore. And if you look very carefully, another scenario, we are coming back to this same scripture, but I would like to look at another case. When the glory came, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, from verse 5. And he says, Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing people, Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because they had heard, because, listen, because each one of them Heard, hmm? again, let me repeat this. It says, when they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. 
utterly amazed. They asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? At Pentecost, the first glory of the Lord descended. And when the first glory of the Lord descended, even the non-Christians, unborn again, not born again, when they heard how the glory descended, even them, they could not afford to ignore. Came out in bewilderment, shock, amazement. What is this? They came out and went there. And on that day, more than 3,000. When Peter spoke without a microphone, more than 3,000 received Jesus. How powerful. Another case in time is in the book of Acts chapter 9. Same book of Acts, chapter 9. Verses 3 to 6. And he says, As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell on the ground and heard a voice saying, Soul, soul. Light from heaven, the glory of the Lord, struck him. And he heard, and he fell on the ground, and he heard the voice called, Soul, soul. Remember, on the other side, Moses, Moses. Why do you persecute me? Soul, soul. Why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Meaning in you, this is the Lord. Saul asked, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Precious people, even the children of Israel, even the children of Israel in the wilderness. When the glory of the Lord descended, the cloud came on the tent on that first day. They all came out and stood at the doors of their tents with their wives and children. And they looked. And the Bible says, and when they saw, they were bewildered. They were amazed. And they knelt down and worshipped the Lord. How awesome. Right now, I am announcing the visitation of the tremendous cloud of God that used to visit during the time of Moses. I am announcing that that visitation is now here in the house. How tremendous. The question then becomes, the Church of Christ in Finland, Church of Christ Lithuania, Scandinavia, Israel, the whole world, Church of Christ, tell me, the glory is now here. Will you ignore this glory? Are you really going to ignore this glory? We have seen in the Bible that when the glory descends, when descended as consuming fire, the burning bush, Moses left the sheep. It does not matter whether they belong to Jethro. He abandoned the sheep. Abandoned. He abandoned the sheep and went out to check he could not ignore. Moses, Moses, he heard. And from there, he received the second calling. 
the higher calling, second level. Saul, when the glory came down, hit him. Saul, Saul, who are you, Lord? He could not ignore. At Pentecost, when the glory descended, there were many God-fearing people living in Jerusalem. They were not Christians. They were Jews and not Christians. They came out and that day they received the Lord. Could not ignore. How about now that the glory has descended? Is the church going to afford to ignore this glory? Are you going to be the first to ignore this glory? He says, nobody can ignore. When Jehovah himself has come down. And you look very carefully here in the book of Exodus chapter 3 that when the glory came down, Listen to what he told Moses. Do not come, verse 5, do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Look at that instruction. When Moses encountered the glory of God, that place, Probably the day before, he had been grazing there. Probably the week before, he had been grazing there. But now, on this day, when the glory descends, he said, no, don't come any closer. This place has now become holy ground. Don't come any closer. For the place where you stand now has now become holy ground. You cannot come. You can't. Precious people, what message do we receive from there? We see that that is the same Jehovah that visited, except that the glory now has consuming fire. But we see that when he visited the tabernacle in Exodus chapter 40, verses 33 to 34. The tent, the tabernacle became holy ground right away. When Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem and the same glory visited, the temple of Solomon became holy ground. How about the church? The Lord is saying that, look, now my glory is in the house. I am in the house, in my cloud. In my glory, I am here now. That means he's saying, hey, Church of Christ, hey, right now, because my glory has come down into the house, Behold, the house of the Lord has now become holy ground. That is the message. That is the message to the nations. The Lord is saying that yesterday you may have come grazing here with your sandals. Sandals of immorality. Sandals of the gospel of prosperity. Sandals of abortion. Sandals of homosexuality, lesbianism in the church. Sandals of smoking, sandals of alcoholism, sandals of drug addiction, sandals of attending nightclubs and coming to church, sandals of going to disco and coming to church, sandals of short mini skirts by women in church, the dressing that exposed the nakedness of women. He's saying, Yesterday, 
last week, last month, you may have come here wearing those sandals of false prophets, sandals of false apostles preaching the gospel which is sweet to the flesh. But now my glory has come and behold, the house of the Lord is now holy ground. Remove the sandals now. Now you cannot come closer with those sandals. Hi. How awesome. How powerful. How mighty is the message of this hour. The message of purification. Remove the sandals means humble yourself. Remove the sandals means humility. Remove the sandals means repentance. Remove the sandals means consecration. Remove the sandals means sanctification. It means the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Precious people, time is over. The Messiah is coming. The Father has shown me the coming of the Messiah. I have seen him coming. Precious people, the house of the Lord has now become holy ground. We must now humble and fear and respect the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is the church. The house of the Lord is the pulpit. The house of the Lord is the heart. The heart of the Christian, the hearts. The house of the Lord is your soul. The house of the Lord is the temple, your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to remove the sandals now. We need to remove sin, wickedness, lukewarmness that you see in Europe. Here, the Christians, they are neither cold nor hot. You don't even know that they are born again if you see them in the streets. The Bible says, if you are lukewarm, these are the days who will spit you out. Precious people, the glory of the Lord is now here. And behold, the house of the Lord has now become holy ground. We must now repent and remove all sin as reverence, as fear unto the Lord. The Lord is now in the house. Shalom. Well, if you would like to receive the Lord, repeat this prayer now. Say, dear Jesus, I repent to you today and reject all sin and ask you, to baptize me with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And keep me away from evil. And establish righteousness and holiness in my life. Establish the cross and the blood in my salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am born again. If you have said that prayer, please read. This, the, the phone number below the screen and call it. Somebody is waiting to pray with you to lead you to further instruction that you may be baptized. Remember the Messiah is coming. You need to walk in holy salvation that you may grow. The Bible says he's coming for a holy church, a mature bride. Whether you receive Christ today you can quickly grow. It's not a physical age. We must all grow. And only holiness. Like when you give birth to a child, when you have a child in your home, the pediatrician, the doctor for children, they tell you what exact diet to give the children so they can grow. So now the Holy Spirit is also giving you a diet. He says only holiness can grow you. Until you grow well, become mature. Shalom, shalom. Find a Christian church, Bible teaching church. Be baptized. The Messiah is coming. This is the voice 
of he about whom it is written that I shall send my servant in those days to prepare your way ahead of you. Shalom Haverim, Shalom Elohim.